Space elevators not only play a major role in science fiction, such as Isaac Asimov's Foundation series, but they could also catapult humanity into a new age. For humanity to begin colonizing the solar system and truly develop into a space-fearing civilization, I believe they would be crucial. This would dramatically reduce the cost of transporting materials into space. The fusion reactor wouldn't hurt either. Elon Musk's opinion on a space elevator. I always think of like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory when I hear the space elevator, you know. Um, but because people th sort of manage like an elevator, you press up and <laughs> you just like, now you're in space. Um, <laughs> this is like a real, this is extremely complicated. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I'm not, I, I don't think it's really realistic to have a space elevator. In 1960, engineer Yuri N. Artsutinov published in the newspaper Pravda the idea of a rope attached to a satellite. But this publication received as little attention as the similar thoughts of oceanographer John Isaacs published in Science in 1966. Only the technical remarks of Jerome Pearson of the Air Force Research Laboratory in Acta Astronautica found some public resonance in 1975. Yet Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, who was inspired by the Eiffel Tower, was already dreaming of a tower into space. It was not until the famous science fiction writer Arthur C. Clarke took up this idea in his novel The Fountains of Paradise in 1979 that this concept became known to a wider audience. A space elevator has so far failed because the stresses involved would make conventional materials such as steel too weak. But new, promising materials are being researched, so it could become a reality in the not too distant future with the help of nanotechnology. A scientific breakthrough here was the discovery of carbon nanotubes in 1991 by the Japanese physicist Sumio Lijima. Unfortunately, we're still a long way from being able to produce a rope several thousand kilometers long. Another possibility is graphene, which was isolated and characterized in 2004 and won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 2010. But applications of this material are still being explored. The competing forces of gravity, stronger at the lower end, and the outward centrifugal force, stronger at the upper end, would result in the cable being held up under tension and stationary over a single position on Earth. Furthermore, the end of the cable would have to be attached to a satellite in geostationary orbit, at least 36,000 kilometers from the Earth's surface. There are also plans to make the cable at least 100,000 kilometers long to reduce the necessary counterweight. It would be safest if the rope were to be fixed on Earth on a floating platform on the ocean near the equator, simply to be mobile and to potentially avoid bad weather or space debris. It would be a good idea to remove it from Earth's orbit anyway. If the rope breaks, you have a serious problem but it has different effects depending on where it breaks. If the split is near the base of the station on Earth, the centrifugal forces would cause the upper half to fly off into space. If, on the other hand, it tears close to the counterweight in space, the rope would wrap around the Earth. Another big problem in near-Earth space would be the radiation of the Van Allen belt. For the Apollo astronauts, however, there was no danger because they raced through it at 42,000 kilometers per hour and were only exposed to an increased radiation dose for a short time. For a slow-moving space elevator, the risk would be particularly high. The current fastest elevator has a speed of just 20.5 meters per second, 73.8 kilometers per hour, which means that the ascent would take weeks. However, this is only a problem if people are on board. If only cargo were transported, the speed could be much greater than 200 kilometers per hour, 124 miles per hour. Thus, the journey would only take several days. However, this speed could not be arbitrarily high because problems would arise, especially during re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Another challenge is the energy supply. This is because the energy required for load transport would be very high. This could be provided by microwave or laser beams from the ground. It would also be conceivable for the ascent unit to be equipped with solar cells, but their efficiency is still too low or their required surface area too large. A further challenge would be the thermal stresses of the rope, because the temperature differences between sea level and space would be too large. The Scientific Advanced Space Infrastructure Workshop on Geostationary Orbiting Tether Space Elevator Concepts, held in June 1999 at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, concluded that such a project could be realized in the second half of this century, reducing transportation costs to less than $10 per kilogram. 
this would change everything in terms of space travel. In October 2007, the Space Elevator Games were held in Salt Lake City. The team that succeeded in ascending 2 meters per second on a 100 meter long rope attached to a helicopter was to receive $900,000 in prize money. However, there was no winner. But back in October 2009, the Space Elevator Challenge was held at NASA's Dryden Flight Research Center and Team Laser Motive won the prize money by managing to ascend the rope at 3.6 meters per second. Three years later, the European Space Elevator Challenge USPEC 2012 was held at the Technical University of Munich in October, and one year later, from August the 7th to the 10th, the SPEC 2013 Space Elevator Challenge was held in Fujinomiya City at the foot of Mount Fuji in Japan. During this event, the team managed to climb a 35mm wide, 2mm thick, and 1200m long ribbon made of aramid called Technora, which was suspended from six balloons. This material was already used in the parachute system of the Mars rover Opportunity. But it's not only students and university research institutes that are working on a space elevator. As the New York Times reported in 2011, and Google initially denied and then later confirmed, researchers at the company X Development, formerly Google X Labs, were also working on this idea. But a space elevator could not just be something for Earth. It could also be built on Mars, and especially on the Moon, because the lower the gravitational pull of the planet or moon, the easier it would be to build it. What's your opinion on this? Write a comment or watch another video on our channel.